Hey, what's up everybody? It's BDF44 coming at you with another video. So today is a trade deadline and I have to apologize to everybody. I made another mistake. I told y'all that it was at 9 o'clock Pacific, 12 p.m. Eastern. Obviously, that is wrong because that time has passed and there's still a lot of time on the clock. Believe it or not, that wasn't my mistake either. It actually said 12 Eastern on the thing. So... They had typed, did a typo, and uh, I ran with bad information, unfortunately. I should have double-checked. It's not the first time that's happened to me, too. But nevertheless, I gave that information to you. I apologize. However, the good thing is there is time still left on the clock because uh, the Lakers haven't done anything, and I think they're trying to make some things happen. So hopefully we are able to accomplish that. Now, as far as my team's concerned, I've said everything that there, is needs, there needs to be said. Uh, I told you guys about the trade rumor that's going on. Hopefully, they'll be able to make something happen. Um, I listened to some guys this morning talk about the team, and you know they're blasting us, as rightfully so. Um, last night was a was a terrible, terrible low. Most people believe it was a new low. I don't. I really don't. I think this is exactly where we've been. I don't think we've hit a new low. I think we're scraping the bottom of the barrel right now. Um, you know, Magic Johnson says he's speechless. You know, uh, James Worthy said it's the lowest point of any Laker team that he's watched. People ran with it and said it was the lowest point ever, and he said it was the lowest point that he maybe the lowest uh, that he's watched. I, I can think of times where things were worse, but what I can tell you is they were never more, um, never with this much on the line. You know what I mean? When we were bad, we knew we were bad, and we had our picks. In this situation, we had championships aspirations and now at this point we are I believe four games under 500 or five games under 500 not sure trade deadline approaching I really do think it makes a lot of sense to make a drastic move and try to get assets but <clears throat> here's the problem here's the real problem you guys I don't trust the brain trust right now it's what it is it's like and I know a lot of people have been on that bandwagon for a while. I think I'm a little late to the party uh, as it pertains to really ready, being ready to blame Jeannie and Rob and whoever else may or may not be running the team. Now, about a month ago, I asked, who is running this team? Because it was very clear to me that there was no clarity there. And I still am not certain. You know, I hear Linda and, and Kurt Rambis uh, name a lot. I hear, obviously, LeBron James and Clutch pick the roster or what have you. No, no one's disputed that. Um, and of course, Rob Palink is our GM, Jeannie's the owner. I think that's where we need to start. We need to figure out, Jeannie needs to, to make some hard choices, just like she did with her brother. She's strong enough to do it. She's strong enough to do it. But she's going to have to make some, some choices as it pertains to getting some professionals down there who may not be in her circle and trust them to do what it is professionals do. Um, Rob Palink has been a GM that I don't know if he has power to do what it is he doesn't or not. But I know that he's a he's an agent first. He's been one of the one of the top agents in the NBA for many many moons, and I think he understands the difference between a good deal and a bad deal. And I think a lot of the deals that he's made have been bad deals, and that's why I wonder if he's been able to actually do what he wants to do. When he and Magic Johnson were down there, wheeling and dealing, <laughs> their intention was to bring us the best players possible. I think they did a good job of bringing us the best players from last decade but I think that was a success and, and it, now it's time to move forward in a different direction problem of course is the fact that whatever made whatever moves are made are going to be made by this brain trust so I don't necessarily want this brain trust to do anything massive until we get the understanding of who's in charge until that those people are competent enough to make better decisions than the ones that have been made for this franchise, then we can go forward with a clear conscience knowing that we're making decisions that are coming from a good place, a smart place, a basketball-minded place. And I think that's where, we're, I think that's where it, it falls upon Jeannie to, to make sure that she hires the people necessary and fires the people necessary. But most importantly that she comes to the conclusion that this needs to take place. At the end of the day, this is her business. This is her father's baby. 
you know, something that he poured his all into and gave us, you know, nothing but success and, and hope. In the years where we didn't win, we had hope. And since he's passed, it's been a difficult run. You know, his son, he left his, he left his to his son, Jim, and that did not work out, as to say the least. We had some hard times there. Jeannie made the hard decision to, um, you know, do what was necessary to make sure that, that she took the team. And we can't blame this on Jim. Since she's had the team, we've won a championship, but we've also given away assets that span across five or six years going forward. I'm never going to ask the Bus family to sell the team because I think that much of them and what they stand for. I really do. But I do want Jeannie to come around to understanding that some of the things that we've done this go-round have run its course. Some of the people that maybe she's trusted to run our team have failed her. And it doesn't make her a bad person or a bad friend or a bad family member to make business decisions that help her. You're not a bad person for telling friends and associates and loved ones, thank you, but I got it from here. And that's, I think, is the, the most important thing for her to do. We could talk about a lot of different things, but until we have a brain trust down there that truly can help her get back to the place that she belongs, which is at the top of the NBA, um, we really can't trust any of the moves that are going to be made or can't trust any of the people that are going to make those moves. I don't know how best to trust that that is going to take place. Like I said, I've seen Jeannie do the impossible, which was remove Jim. So my faith in her is pretty high. It's pretty, it's pretty high, man. And like I said, the character that she's displayed as an owner is probably the best in the business. You haven't seen more people stand for things that benefit people who don't have and benefit people who are just not, you know, respected or benefit people who, um, who deserve respect but maybe don't get it. You don't see too many owners that provide that type of stance as consistently as she has. So from a human perspective, I am happy she owns this team. And I think probably everybody, li literally everyone I've ever spoken to about it, loves Jeannie Buss. Like, we really love the lady. We do. From, from a human place. So I want her to continue to succeed. I don't want to see her fail, and I certainly don't want her to be let down by the people that she's trusted. That's where I'm at with that. So I think it's time to, to, for, for her to get strong again because when you made the decision to, to do so with your brother, it led to us winning a championship. And I think that that path forward is, is a way toward us getting a championship again. So I wouldn't really necessarily want to do anything major today even though I think it's necessary to do so until we have that pecking order and that understanding and the noise and the lack of structure in place we are blessed to have a guy like lebron james who will sit here in this situation and not demand a trade regardless who put this together it's falling apart we're blessed to have a guy like anthony davis the same was not requesting a trade because you look at some of these other teams guys like james harden they're getting the hell out of there guys like ben simmons they refuse to even play so if i don't show respect for that and respect for genie for making sure that she put people in place who respected her enough to do that, then I would not be doing my job as a person on this camera. I don't doubt that she's put people she's trusted and good human beings around her. I think everybody that she believes she's trusted is probably people that she, she can trust in life. But as it pertains to the science of basketball and the, and the business of, of the Lakers, that's not just for any old body. That is one of the most important brands in the world, and in sports. It's something that means a lot to myself personally, but even more so, three, four, five million people across the world. We really, really love this team, and we, we really want to see us succeed, and we really want to have a future past this particular era. I think she wants the same thing. I think the people in place that she's trusted want the same thing. I just don't think we really know how to get there right now.
And that's a shame because we have 17 NBA championships that prove, has proven that we know how to get there. But when you skip steps like we have to get a championship, getting, you know, getting rid of so many young players, so many high-level prospects that could develop into something for us, when you skip steps and you go for a, a, a championship that, that you, beat, you buy and pay for, you forego the opportunity to be in contention for many years ahead of that. And the one thing I want to remind Jeannie is that we're never, we were never a franchise that just picked up one championship at a time. When we win, we win three, four, two. That's how we do it. It's rare when you see the Lakers just win one championship in one era. And that's what we've done here. We've won one championship in this era. For our standards and what it is that we are about, that's not a success. I would never call it a failure that's disrespectful to teams like Sacramento and Indiana, Phoenix, Orlando, and many others who have yet to win. Teams like Milwaukee and Cleveland and Toronto who've only won one. It's disrespectful to say that. But we are us for a reason. And that path that got us to being who it is that we are is not the path that we're on right now. Yes, we had players that we picked up along the way. Kareem Abdul-Jabbar. You know what I mean? We've had Shaq. We've had Powell. Guys that we picked up and signed in free agency. But we always had guys that we got on draft night, too. Like Kobe Bryant, James Worthy, Magic Johnson. I think we've lost sight of the fact that that is also part of it. You got to have your homegrown guys. You got to trust some of these guys that you draft to be who it is that you trust they would be. Giving away all of them and then bringing in nothing but money guys... That's not how you get more than one championship. That's not how you put yourself in a chance, in a position to get multiple championships. I look at Golden State. I look at Milwaukee. They have their homegrown guys. They developed. They were patient with. They took their time with those guys, and they poured their all into those development, into their development. And because of it, they were able to win. I have a chance to win more than one. I think Milwaukee has a chance to win another one this year. I really do. And another one next year probably too. They have their own guys. Homegrown. And I look at some of the teams around the league right now, like Memphis, Minnesota, Houston, Cleveland. They're on that path too. Toronto. I think these teams have a chance someday. Maybe within the next four or five years. Even Phoenix, because they have key stars that were ones that they drafted. We got to get back to that. We let all of our young guys go. Brandon Ingram, Lonzo Ball, Julius Randle, Jordan Clarkson. So many of them. <laughs> Guys of, of which, if we had them all on this team right now, D'Angelo Russell, we'd probably be in contention just like we were last year. If we would have kept all of those kids. And we would have picks and cap space to maybe acquire the same guys that we got right now if we really wanted to. Maybe. While we're still, re while still retaining path toward our future you can't skip steps is what I'm saying and expect to sustain we skip steps we got a championship and now we're in pain we can learn from this but learning from it is only half the battle you gotta put in action what is 
now new wisdom. You got to do things differently so that you can get better results. But the first thing we must do is make sure that whoever we put in place to do those things is qualified fully and proven. I don't know if firing Rob Palenka is the way forward, but I do know that if he doesn't have the f full reach to do what it is that his job is, then what's the difference if we keep him or not? Or bring someone else in or not? It's a difference. If people who are not the GM are making these decisions, it doesn't matter who you have in place. Problem is management. On the basketball floor, it's a lot of different things. But the fact of the matter is, everything starts at the top with Jeannie and the people she puts in place to help her make the decisions on the basketball floor and then the decisions that they make to hire coaches, and etc. Put players on the floor, all of that. It starts with you, Jeannie. And so it's your fault this is all going down. And it's also your job, your duty, to fix it. I'm going to be a Laker fan regardless. We can be in the toilet for the rest of my life. I'm never going to change in that way. I'm not going to tell you I'm going to be sitting there watching it because I didn't really watch when Sacre and them was on the floor. I didn't. I'm not going to lie to you. I didn't watch that. But I was always paying attention, always cared, always listened to the chatter, and I always was looking forward to a day when I felt like watching the Lakers again. This is yet another one of those eras like Sacre where I don't really want to watch anymore. And I think a lot of Laker Nation feels the exact same way. There's no disrespect to LeBron James and Anthony Davis and, and the players on the floor, but I just have no interest in watching my team lose when I know that they're not favored to win most of the games that they play. I'll still watch because I got a channel to keep up now. And unlike those eras, I'm doing this. So I'm definitely going to cover them. But my enthusiasm isn't the same. My desire to sit there for three hours and watch them run around when I know that they're not going to play up to par, when I know that they're, the coach is not going to put a best of players in place to, to do the best things that they can do for themselves and, and to play to their strengths, when I know these things are going to trickle down, when I know the players that are running around down there are my age, I'm 37. I'm not interested in seeing that. So, this is my, that was my message, you know. I just wanted to put that out there. The trade deadline comes up in a couple hours. And I'm going to pay attention to see what the Lakers do. But no matter what they do, until we get that pecking order straight, until we get people in place that are actually qualified to do their jobs and have the ability, without any restraint, to do that job, my faith in this franchise is on the floor. That's my message to Jeannie Buzz. My name is BDL44. Thank you all for watching.